Do you want to build more dynamic data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric? That is what you are going to learn in this video. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and on this channel I cover Microsoft Azure and Fabric related topics. In this video we are going to continue our journey with Microsoft Fabric data engineering and in this video we are going to cover pipeline parameters. This video is also part of my Microsoft Fabric data engineering series and link to the playlist can be found in the description below. But now let's talk about pipeline parameters that are one of the key features in Microsoft Fabric pipelines that allow data engineers to build more dynamic and flexible pipelines that will save up development time and reduce the overall complexity of those solutions. In this video I will first cover the pipeline parameters on conceptual level that will help you to understand how they work and then we are going to have a demo tutorial that will show to you how these parameters work in action. Let's get started. Let's imagine a situation that we have a lake house in fabric and in that lake house we have two files f1 source.txt and f2 source.txt and then we would like to copy these files to another lake house and change the src in the file name to dst. How could we get this done? Of course there are multiple ways to achieve this goal in fabric but one simple way would be use fabric pipelines. We would create a fabric pipeline and add two copy activities to that pipeline and then copy those files from our source lake house to our destination lake house. This setup is all good and fine and it works, but we can use it as an example to demonstrate how we can use pipeline parameters to reduce the number of activities in this pipeline. We can start by removing these two copy activities and replacing them with just one copy activity. Next, we would like to add two parameters with a string data type to this pipeline called source file and destination file. Then we can pass down these parameters from the pipeline level to copy activity and use these parameter values to dynamically decide which file to copy. For example, when running the pipeline, if we would add string f1 source.txt to source file parameter and f1 dst.txt to destination file, we would be able to copy f1 source file from our source lake house to our destination lake house with a different name. And by running this same pipeline again and changing the parameter values, we would be able to copy the other file as well without doing any modification to pipeline itself. This is just a simple illustration how you can use parameters in pipelines to do things dynamically. Next, let's go through a few key points about parameters. The main functionality of parameters is passing external values to pipelines. Parameters can be literal, meaning some hard-coded values, or parameters can be expressions that are evaluated when the pipeline runs. In this video we are not going to cover expressions since we are going to have a dedicated video on them during upcoming weeks. But it is still the good to keep in mind that you don't have to use some hard-coded values when using parameters. Parameters can be very helpful and save a lot of development time when used correctly, since they allow adding dynamic logic and they can be used in all the places that support adding dynamic content, that I'm going to demonstrate to you shortly when we open up Fabric. Also, as a last takeaway here, it is good to note that there are different data types available for parameters that are string, integer, float, boolean, array, object and secure string. Now let's hop into Fabric and let's do a demo slash tutorial that will help you to learn and see how these parameters work in action. Also all the files that I will be using in my demo slash tutorials can be found by clicking the link in the description. But before we open up Fabric, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Muxed Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to Fabric. Let's start by opening up a lake house to which I have already created two folders for this tutorial. We have Fabric DE Series 5 source and destination folders. Our destination folder is still empty, but in the source folder I have two files that I have uploaded there. The goal of this tutorial is to copy these files to the destination folder and change the file name by using pipeline that uses parameters to decide which file to copy. Next, let's click create and select a new data pipeline and name that pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we wait for the pipeline development canvas to load up. 
Next, we want to start building our pipeline using blank canvas and just add a copy data activity to that canvas. We can name this copy activity to reflect what it does. And since the goal was to copy data from lakehouse to lakehouse, we can name this copy data from LH to LH. Then we can click somewhere to the blank canvas so that the tabs under our canvas change. Here we can find the parameters tab that we are going to use in this tutorial. We want to create two parameters for our pipeline that are both going to be string type. Next, we can name our first parameter to be source file name and then our second parameter to be destination file name. We could add some default values for these parameters that would be used if these parameters were not given any values when running the pipeline. But there is no need to do that in this tutorial. Next, we can open the copy activity and configure our source tab. We want to use the lake house that I showed you previously as our source, so let's select it from our list of lake houses. Then we want to use files as our root folder since we are copying raw files. Next, we can click browse and select our source folder. However, even though we can see both files in our folder, we don't want to select either of those since we don't want to hard code the file names to our file path. So we can just click OK without selecting any files. And this will then just add our folder to our path. Next, let's click the file name field as active. And this will then show this add dynamic content under the input field. Let's click it. This will then open the pipeline expression builder that we are not going to cover in very detail in this video. But we can see that in parameter tab, we have two parameters available. And those are the same parameters that we defined to this pipeline previously. Since we are now configuring our source, we want to click the source file name parameter that will then automatically create the expression for us that will point to that parameter. Next, let's click OK. And we can see that now we have that parameter expression in our file path after our source folder. We can just quickly check that we are using binary as our file format, since in this tutorial we are copying files as binary blocks without caring about the file contents. Now we are done with our source configuration. Next, we are going to configure our destination that will happen in very similar fashion. We want our data store to be workspace data store and the type to be lake house. Next, we want to find our lake house from the list of lake houses. Then we want to change our root folder to files and again browse and find our destination folder. And again, not to select any files that are not found in any case since our destination folder is empty. Then for our file name, we want to use dynamic content and now select our destination file name parameter and then click OK. File format is already binary like it should be, so now we have configured our destination correctly. Then we can click and validate to see that there are no configuration errors in our pipeline and there were none, so everything should be fine from configuration perspective. So the next step is to run our pipeline. We can click run that will then prompt us to save and run this pipeline and we can do that. This will then ask us to provide values for our parameters that we have defined for this pipeline. To the first parameter, we can now input the file name of our first file that is f1 source.txt. And to the destination, we can input the name that we want that file to have after it has been copied. And I'm just going to change src to dst in the file name. Now we can click OK. That will then trigger our run. Now we have to wait for our run to finish. Now our run has finished and we can click the activity name to get a bit more information what happened there. And we can see that one file was read and one file was written. So that seems to be correct. Also, before checking the lake house, I want to show to you two tips that might help you when you're working with parameters. My first tip is to show to you how you can double check which parameter values were used when running the pipeline. This can be done by clicking this little at sign here, which will then show the parameter used for the run. The second tip is that we can check activity input to see what was the value that went to our file name when the pipeline ran. This can be done by clicking this input icon here and browsing this input JSON. 
Here we want to find the value for our file name property, which is the parameter value that we gave to this pipeline. Next, we can go and check out our lake house and see that we have a new file in our destination folder. So according to this, everything went as planned. Let's go back to our pipeline and now run this pipeline with different parameters and copy our second file to our destination folder as well with the same convention as the previous file. Now our run has succeeded and let's go to our lake house and as we can see now we have two files in our destination folder. You should now have the basic idea how to use pipeline parameters to build a bit more dynamic pipelines. In the upcoming episodes we are going to check out variables, expressions and loops that will allow you to build even more dynamic and iterative pipelines. If you want to learn more about Marxed Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.